everybody today we are having our last instagram live, instagram live of march um we will be doing an instagram live about exam prep tips with academic skills so we will be speaking with a ulsa student so we're just gonna give it some time and wait for them to join so that we can start the instagram live Okay, just give me a minute. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Okay, um, yeah, I, I, I overheard that you were, you know, gave an introduction. Uh, I don't know if you presented, but yeah, I, I can I can introduce myself. So hi, everyone. Yeah. Um, my name is Claudia. I'm an online learning student assistant with academic skills. What we do, uh, I'm in fourth year psychology, so I'm a student just as you are. Uh, what we do as online learning student assistants is we help and we support students with online learning. So... Uh, with time management skills, studying skills, anything that relates to that. Yeah, that's a quick introduction. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So I know that exams are coming up soon, so I wanted to, you know, maybe speak with you specifically because, you know, exams are mostly going to be online. So I mm -hmm. think it might be a different method, a different, like, study strategies for people. So I just wanted your input so maybe we could help students figure out how to study better for online learning. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you knew like any tips or strategies um, that you would recommend for online studying for exams? Yeah, so, well, when we talk about online studies and in-person studies, like, well, there's obvious difference, but like there are some very practical things that we all can do that make online studies better and easier. So first is setting a study space. Like most of us might be at our, our homes or just with our roommates. So yeah, set a study space. Make sure that where you're studying is like, if you can, in a desk or just a, a place where you get good connection and you won't be interrupted. Also, because we are living with other people, maybe tell people you're going to have an exam and how, like, if you're going to have an exam from 7 to 9, tell them, like, I'm going to be an exam, please just keep it quiet. So everyone knows and there's no problems during the exam. Also, some do some tech <laughs> pre prepare. So make sure your, your computer is charged 30 minutes before the exam. So, yeah, check your internet connection as well, 30 minutes. I don't know, for me, my internet sometimes just dies, but yeah. yeah. So check internet connection, very important. Something that it's also important is common distractions. If it's an open, some, well, if it's an exam that it's online and you have your phone with you, I don't know. Every time I get a text, I lose it. So yeah, if you know that your phone, yeah, for sure. Uh, if you think like your phone is going to be a problem, put it away, like put it in, a, in another room, like don't even have it in your room if you can. And yeah, and one last suggestion that is compared to in-person exams. In in-person exams, we have a paper so we can write our ideas around down, but like in, in an online exam, we don't. So I always encourage like students to have a paper, a blank paper, just to, you know, can write anything and come back to questions just as, as if it was an in-person exam. Yeah, would you like to add anything to that as, as your experience as, as a student? Uh, no, I think I, I agree with you. I think definitely having mm -hmm. like a quiet spot is necessary. I think when you're, especially like living with roommates, like it could be super loud, super crazy. And like, so I think we forget that like we're still in school now that we're online and that we're home. So it's like, you have to kind of change your mindset so that you're back into like a learning environment kind of. But like, I agree with everything that you said for sure. Like, I think that's, it's definitely important to just have a quiet space and like check your internet and make sure everything's charged. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, 
Mm-hmm. What else were you thinking about? So I was also wondering, um, I know, at least for me, like I have different types of exams. So I have like multiple choice. I have open book. I have essays that I have to do. So I was just wondering, I'm sure that people have the same type of format. So I was just wondering if you have any tips or like um, different study methods that students can use based on those formats. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I know like formats vary and also like it, it depends on the class too because you have to get to know your prof, what they like and kind of the questions. And it, because we're in, by the end of the semester, we had midterms, so we kind of know where they like to ask questions, like if they like to compare, contrast, apply questions. Uh, but yeah, related with exams, I think first I'm going to just think of something that it's necessary for all exams doesn't matter like what kind of exam it is and it's make a study plan so first before anything it doesn't matter what kind of assignment exam thing you have make a study plan so schedule make a schedule of the i think it's two weeks of exams uh yeah make a schedule write the deadlines for your assignments for your exams and for any holidays or important Occasions that you know you're not going to study, like it's or you have work or something that it's then you cannot move it. Um, once you've done that, um, kind of think like what, how many hours do you have each day to study? Uh, and then you have to start like planning when are you going to study for each thing and kind of like calculating. Let me see, I have an example here and I can show it to you. So this is an example of just like organizing. Uh, so once I decided like this are the things that I have to do. Uh, these are assignments, these are exams. So I have like midterm study. These are my studies only related to my, to my uh, exams. And what I like to do, it also depends on everyone, but I like to think like three days prior to my exam. Some people might be like, no, I will forget everything. I cannot do that. But just like spacing things out, it helps like you that you remember things better. But also on top of that, uh, and, that and like you can divide it by chapters or however you want to organize it by weeks, by themes. And then you can also have like organizing how you do your assignments. So I broke my assignment here as well. Um, and something that we all know, it's ratings that we have fallen behind during the semester. So also put that in your schedule. Also, like, uh, it's important to prioritize. Sometimes there are ratings that are, like, are not mandatory, but they are like, you, sh you may do this. But if you know that it's not mandatory, like, it's okay if you don't do them. Like, first get the studies that are kind of a priority first. Yeah, so, yeah, for all exams, do a schedule. Always do a schedule. And, yeah, and now talking about, like, specific exams, we have, as you mentioned, like, um, a lot of exams now are open book. And what that means, and I know that a lot of pros might have told us this, is it doesn't mean that we don't have to study. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so there are, like, Five, five main tips for that. So first, understand the expectations for the exam. So you have to know what the student open exam means for this course. Like what is the material that I can use and what is something that I can't. Um, then also the next step is to go back to your syllabus. Your syllabus is one of your best friends here because just like that tells you what the prof wants to test you in the last exam. So if you can go back to your syllabus, go back to your objectives, go back to your goals and kind of think like, okay, how would I word this into a question? And how could they ask uh, about this in my exam? Um, then the second step would be preparing your study notes. So this is where it comes like you do have to study. So your study notes can be in the form of mind maps. You can do a study chart. Um, the importance of having study notes here in an open book exam is that they are organized. Because even the good thing about an open book exam is that you can go back. But if you have a lot of information and you don't know where to go back, it's just going to take you a lot of time 
just looking for that information. Yeah. So when you're preparing your study notes, it's important that you code things so you know where they are. I don't know. I love color coding. I don't know if you have any other strategy that you like to code your summaries for your exams. I normally just do it by like chapters, but then mm -hmm. I have like when I in my notes, it's like the chapters are like the biggest portion, so I can like see the name, and I'm like, okay, well, this is what this chapter is about. That's what this chapter is about. So then I can like, mm -hmm. find it easily. Yeah, for sure. That's an excellent idea. I think I do that too. Like I have my, for chapters or for weeks, I have like mind maps and I just go back to my mind map and I'm like here and I highlight like the like, keywords. So I'm like, okay, yeah. keywords. Um, yeah. So open book, have a system and yes, yeah, study. If you can, after you study, ask questions. So you see if you can answer and just practice. Uh, for multiple choice exams, you can study your key terms with flashcards and also practice with tests in your textbook. And something that I've seen is that because now sometimes multiple choice exams are also open book, they are not about definitions, but they are about applying the concept. So when you're studying, try to do that. Like, don't define it as it is in the textbook. Just use it in a real life situation. So then when you come with an application question in the exam, you're like, oh, I know this. Um, short answer questions. I think sometimes it's like short answer, but the instruction is super big. So yeah. I personally get lost. Uh, there's this amazing tool that it's called Weaver, uh, that is a highlighter that you can use in Blackboard. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, it's amazing. So usually, I don't know, like in my exams, I would be like, okay, I'm very, I have my paper exam. I can just think and just put my, even my finger, just follow it. But you cannot do that in online exams. But with this, with highlighter, you can just highlight like keywords and you're like, okay, this short answer tells me that I have to do this from this chapter that I remember. So you can just do that. And yeah. And essay questions. Finally, some tips for essay questions. I feel like I'm, I'm going all over the place, but yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of different kind of exams. But for essay questions, um, yeah, it's kind of the same. Uh, like, always go back to your syllabus because that way you know what the problem is more interested in. And for as for exams that are with essays, when you study, try to do outlines because that way, like you start creating connections and you anticipate the essay question. Yeah, that's everything. Or like a little summary <laughs> of what you can do with different types of exams in online. No, it was very like informative. I think I always forget it spe specifically with. Um, open book I'm always just like well I'm gonna have to worry about it it's open book I, I have all my books with me and then like normally the exams are three hours and three hours seems like a lot but when you don't know anything three hours goes by <laughs> super quickly especially when you're like flipping through your textbooks or like just like trying to find the answer so like it's definitely good to at least have a plan so you can have everything in one document and also yeah yeah with like creating a study plan too I find like I've been doing that recently this year and it definitely helps. And I also like noticed that there's different study plans for different people. If that makes sense. Like for me, I have to see it like in front of me. I can't do like a journal, like a little agenda that doesn't help me at all. I have to have it like mm -hmm. a big calendar in my room. And that's the only way that like, I'm like, okay, I have to do this. Yeah, for sure. Like for me, I like, I usually just do like bullet journaling because I just love to see it. Like I need to see it on paper. Otherwise yeah. my mind is not organized, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So um, another question that I did have is obviously with exam times and studying and taking exams, there's a lot of stress that happens. So I was wondering if you have any ideas of what students can do to help alleviate any of the stress that they may have during this time. Yeah, for sure. So um, I think like the first thing to do is identify why are you stressed? So are you stressed because you don't know the concepts, you don't understand and anything is happening in the course uh, and you're just completely lost? <laughs> if that's why, 
just contact your TA uh, and your prof, identify what where are the things that are you're like, I have no idea what this is talking about because like profs and TAs are there to answer questions. And I think some of them have even like office hours and you can just have an appointment with them and just talk about all those concepts. Maybe you can go back to your midterm, see all the things that you didn't do well and, and or review them with that and them. Um, so you don't make the same mistakes in the final exam. Uh, if you ask yourself, why am I stressed? And it's just because you have no idea where to start. Like, how do I study? Like, how do you, are you supposed to study for a university exam? Like, you can always go to the Academic Skills website. There are a lot of tips that go deeper into what I said and like explain step by step and everything. If you find like that's not helpful and you're still like, I have no idea how to organize my time. Or I really think like there's a situation that I just need more help with. You can always book an appointment with an academic skills advisor uh, through your student experience portal that is in my trends portal. Uh, yeah, there are different kinds of appointments. So you can go um, in the same day appointment. So if, it, if one day you're just like, oh, I just need an appointment now, you can just call um, the academic skills. I think it's the line. And then like they will tell you which college is doing the drop in uh, the, the same day appointments with academic skills. So you can just go into academic skills appointment and they will help you figure out like, what is the best way that you can study and what has worked before and what can work now. Um, and if you're stressed just because life is too much right now, like it's okay. Like it's valid to feel that way. I think like this time it's just like everything, a lot is happening. And if you need help, like, just ask, like there are so many resources at a campus. You, we have like resources for mental health, like peer support that you can talk to and upper year students about everything, anything and everything. You have also counseling. Um, yeah, we have a lot of services. So really, if you're just like feeling overwhelmed with everything and it's just a mix of all the things, just like reach out. Like, and if you don't know where to reach out, like you can ask someone <laughs> and they will guide you to where, where you can go. Uh, okay, and something, so before the exam, a good idea is to avoid stress, is to, to have a study plan, because that way you will feel prepared to, for the exam, and you will be like, I don't know anything. So it's like, okay, I'm prepared for this. Then sleep well before the exam, <laughs> and have food before the exam. <laughs> So that way you're just not thinking of, oh, I'm so hungry. Um, and something that might be helpful is before the exam, like try to do some breathing exercises. So you just uh, lower your anxiety levels and your stress levels. And also something that one of my profs said just was like, think of someone who loves you very much. And just like that fills you with love before the exam. Yeah. And just like, wait feelings and then you go into the exam and you're like okay I can do this um and during the exam uh so in in online exams you have the options to see the different questions how many questions have you answered so you can open that most of the exams have an option so yeah. then if you have a paper you can be marking like what are the the <laughs> the questions the questions that you have skipped and also, like, you can see which are the questions that you answered in that menu. Um, if you don't understand a question because you have your blank paper and sometimes, like, you can go back to the questions, like, mark it down, continue with the next. Like, you do know this. Maybe it's not coming to you right now, but you don't know this, so go to the next. Um, yeah. Uh, and when, and also like, I know that it's like when it's open book, it's like, okay, I can just put everything I have in my notebook in yeah. the exam. Like, don't use your notes unless you really, really have no idea. Like, leave those questions that you have no idea and you really need to go back to your notes for the end of the exam. And also organize 
your time in the exam as as you prefer. Like, I don't know, for me, I prefer, I think I prefer going through the easy questions first and then through the other, like the ones that have more mar marks last. Yeah. But some people prefer the other way around. Like, do first do the short answer questions, the essay question, and then multiple choice and easy questions. So it's completely up to you, but organize your time according to that as well. And yeah, I think those are all the tips that I can think of. Perfect. I definitely think like the study plan, if I'm taking one thing away from all of this is like the study plan definitely helps. I've been, my first two years, I haven't, I didn't really do study plans. I was kind of like, oh, I'll figure it out. I'll just do mm. like five chapters today, even though it was too much chapters to do. And like, I find that when you do a study plan, like it does help with stress and like you're more relaxed and you go into the exam with like more, like you're just ready to do the exam. Yeah, for thing. sure. Yeah, it's, it's like that. It's like a process. Like you have to go before you have to manage your stress and during and even after, like after the exam, just like, I don't know. I'm su like, I'm, I'm a sweet tooth. I don't know. I love like just yeah. Up. I can just say like, okay, I'm having brownies after the exam. So you have your reward after your exam. Yeah. Yeah. Or even just like doing things before your exam, like you said, except mm -hmm. people maybe like, I don't know, draw, do painting, go to the gym if that's what you want. Like something that'll help you de-stress before during the exam will definitely help you too. Yeah, for sure. Kind of like if you don't know that in the 30 minutes before the exam, you never knew it. Like it's okay. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> before before the exam yeah uh yeah I, I think like the only thing i wanted to add is like if you need help remember that you can book an appointment through for academic skills through the student portal also you can contact online learning student assistance at olsa at dot at trent dot ca trent u dot ca and you can follow us at academic skills in instagram to just see we are putting a lot of posts about exam tips so Practically everything I've said is on those posts. So, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I will say, like, again, like, the academic skills, like, Instagram page is definitely very, very helpful. I go through it, like, twice a day sometimes. And, like, there's always something new that can help you with your exams. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining our live and sharing your tips with students so that they can prepare for exams. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Okay, have a good day. You have a good day. Okay, bye. Bye.